is our history Buildings and people and memories and dreams Who better to tell us than those who were there There's so much to learn from the stories they'll share Living history Hello, this is Ted Goldsboro with our Living History program. Today we're going to be talking with Ed Minchell, who grew up in Penwin, graduated from Lower Marion, worked for Auto Car. So here we go. Uh, Ed, I wanted to talk about these uh, pictures oh, of your I, house. I want yeah. to tell you, uh, tell you to tell me about your house in Penwin. Right. So uh, we'll start with your first house right. in Penwin. Could you talk about <coughs> yeah, that? that <coughs> first house was 232 Henley Road. It set up high off the street. There was quite a bank in front of it. And my dad planted on the terrace of that bank a copper beach early in the game. I mean, mm. he, he bought the house. We moved in 28. 28. I would say a couple years later. Wow. And you have seen the tree now. It, it overwhelms the house. <laughs> But uh, that's the front porch that I used to sit and look across uh, where my friends lived on Braddock Lane. Uh, it was a twin house, and it was the heat supply was uh, central plant heat, steam heat, that came out of West Philadelphia or Overbrook from the Lewis Jones Heating Company. And the whole neighborhood, bar any, the whole neighborhood all was on this system, Penwin and Overbrook Hills and other parts of Lower Marion, mm -hmm. as I understand. And uh, how did the steam get there? How did well, it was pump, pumped, pressurized, and pumped out through pipes, underground pipes. And they were all underground in the community, except where a house hadn't been built when they first put the system in. Mm -hmm. We called them vacant lots. That's where the kids played. The pipes came up out of the ground because they were easier to service mm -hmm. and check for leaks mm -hmm. or anything. And they were wrapped thoroughly with a big, oh. thick insulation. Oh. And the funny thing, in the winter time, when the ground's covered with snow, those pipes would show because all the snow would be melted. <laughs> and we would go with our snow suits, you know, having snowball fights. We'd sit on those pipes to warm up. <laughs> how, <laughs> so, how big a diameter pipe was oh, it? Oh, it was, uh, I'd big? say, yeah, I would Six say it or eight? was uh, eight, eight or ten, ten inches. Pretty big. On the outside yeah. of the uh, insulation, probably wow. a foot, wow. you know, because the insulation was a couple inches. Yeah. They were big pipes. I'm not sure the interior diameter of the pipe, the uh -huh. pump steam, but you know, it supplied the whole neighborhood. It supplied mm. a lot of people. Mm. And how yeah. were you charged for well, that? Well, we have a, I have a bill here from uh, Lewis Jones Heating Company. Um, they were in West Philadelphia, 64th Street, uh, in Lebanon Avenue. That was the office. And my mom and dad's bill was, they, they listed minimum bills. They had a chart on the back of the bill. They listed the minimum prices. And everybody usually tried to stay inside that. But uh, their bill for the year, heating for the year, would be $141, the minimum. Mm -hmm. And they usually stuck to that. And then it mm -hmm. broke down to payments of $23.50 per month. And it mm -hmm. says for the heating, uh, the heating season of 1940-41. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the way they build, the way they measured it, the steam would condense after it went. It was pumped through the house, and it would condense and return in, in the form of water mm -hmm. down this trough and through a meter, and that meter would give them the reading. Was that meter that in, be, your, in your basement? It was. In a, each individual had a meter in a basement, oh. just as the water went out of the house oh. and left the system. It was returned to the okay. steam plant in West Philadelphia. Well, how would they check that meter? Did they I'm come around? I'm not sure or? if they came around and took a reading just like your electric company mm -hmm, does mm -hmm. uh, these days. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm pretty sure that was close to it. But, you know, it had to be total honesty because I remember in our basement there would be this long trough, long metal trough, you know, uh, anchored into the cement wall, and uh, uh, the basement wall, downhill, gravity feed, and it would mm -hmm. go down through this drain with a cover on it to keep objects from going mm -hmm. through and hurting the meter. And the mm -hmm. meter was plumbed into that. Oh, I see. And I remember seeing the meter. It was just oh. like a... So you could have taken some well, of the water out of Well, all you had to there. do is d d 
turn that water away from that. Yeah, right. Any water you kept out of that drain, we wouldn't even pay for it. <laughs> That's right. Now, Thus, uh, they had a minimum. Now, the minimums, okay. see, the minimums. So nobody, they get you that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I doubt, doubt if anybody paid much over the minimums. Yes. You know. uh, now, once the steam was in your house, how did it keep you warm? Oh, uh, iron radiators. Uh -huh. Like and normal. Everyone, just like everybody cast had iron. those days. Cast okay. iron radiators, you okay. know. Okay. And uh, once in a while, the, the system would get um, filled with water rather than steam it would oh. and it would sort of block things up and slow oh. down so at the end of that they had a a drain oh, I see. so if your radiator wasn't getting hot mm -hmm. you would get a little pan remember my okay. get Good. a pan that had a little key and they'd open up that valve okay. and let the water drain out so you had half a uh, half steam and half air oh, okay. you know so it was okay uh -huh. that, did so. it make any sissing or banging or anything yeah i remember a little of that Mm -hmm. Not a lot, okay. Because uh, I think steam was not prone to make noise as much as the old hot water systems. They did okay. thump and bump. Okay. But uh, I guess if you got too much water in there, and that's why they would drain them. Uh huh. They wouldn't be as efficient. So okay. that's why people would want to get the water out of there because they're paying for what returns. Yes, yes. You know? uh, let me interject here. Uh, I have a a map which um, we'll we'll show the camera, but uh, right. then we're going to cut this out. Uh, right this here is, is the plant. Yeah, the the um, it was near the railroad tracks, and I guess so they could get coal cars in there. And when right. I was a kid, there was a big smokestack right. uh, in Overbrook near Our Lady of Lords Church, Church. which right. was Sixty Third and Lancaster. Right. And the steam plant was just down the hill from that. By the you went under the railroad tracks, but the office was over at Sixty Third and Lebanon. I think mm -hmm. you said. Mm -hmm. yeah, so right. it was uh, four or five blocks apart yeah, from Sixty Fourth and Lebanon. Right. Okay, Sixty Fourth. Okay. Right. All right. Now, tell me about your any other re remembrances about uh, living in that twin house. What about that dog? Oh, yeah. Well, <coughs> the first dog that we ever had. I had a bro little brother at that point, and uh, he was about. I'd say he was about two, going on three, and I was five years old, and we received a dog as a Christmas gift from my uncle Fred, who lived up in City Avenue in Ardmore. Okay. And now this is not the dog. This oh, is the that's second another dog. dog. Yeah. <laughs> First dog. He was, we called him Rex. He was a thoroughbred German Shepherd, and oh. he was a door prize at the opening of the Suburban Theater in Suburban Square. Wow. Somebody deserted him, whoever won him. Oh. Let him stray, oh. and uh, my uncle picked him up and identified him, and he was a pretty good dog, thoroughbred oh. dog. So he gave him to us, and my mother used to brag about him because she had him housebroken or trained, as we call it in those uh -huh. days, in one day, <laughs> on the telephone pole out in front of <laughs> 232. <laughs> one day, he never made a mistake. Wow. This dog was really, wow. really bright, yeah. and we loved him, but oh. you know, he had to go to the Ardmore Animal Hospital to be dewormed. Oh, and apparently he picked up distemper oh, at the oh, hospital. Oh, we don't know. Oh. Dr. Stater, you know who that is, yeah. uh, recommended that he get a distemper <coughs> shot while he was there, $10. Well, in those days, mm. in the 30s, my mom and mm. dad didn't have $10 to spend on a dog. I mean, dogs <laughs> didn't get the kind of treatment yeah, they the do kids today. Did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they didn't get hospitalization. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so. He, a poor guy came down oh, with distemper. Oh, now, Bob and I used to take him everywhere. You know, we were so thrilled. This yeah. is the first year. We only had him about a year. Oh. And uh, I remember taking him down to Cobbs Creek. He broke through the ice and he waded through the water and oh, stuff like that. So I don't know why he got distemper. Oh. But uh, he did. And he would have these little fits. He'd lay on the floor and he'd be slobbering. But you'd bring him like home. Him. Oh, we had him home. Oh. We had him home. But it wasn't contagious. No, no, no. It oh. wasn't contagious. Oh. But the thing was, a dog would, in that condition might bite you or something. This oh. dog was, mom would get cold cloth and oh. soothe him over his oh. head and so forth, oh. cool him down. Oh. Oh. And he was so, such a good dog and so appreciative of everything that you oh. did for him. Oh. He was never a danger uh -huh. in that situation. Oh, wow. So it got worse and worse, and Dad took him back to Dr. Stater. And I'll never forget, I came home from playing one night, and it was in the fall, and it was a little dark. Dad pulled in the garage. We had a little two-car garage in the back, separate, you know, those little things. And um, I was waiting for him in the backyard, and he said, I, I have bad news for you. Oh. And he, told, he said, they ha I had a, 
have Rex put down. Oh, you know, okay. I, oh. I didn't understand that too yeah, well, but you know. How old do you think you were? I was six. Oh, I, I, yeah, first yeah. grade, I think. Yeah. Anyway, our grandmother in Armour felt so bad for us, she gave us this oh. dog. We'll get to this dog. <laughs> we called him Linky, and he was a oh, mongrel. Linky. He was just a okay. fun dog, mongrel. Uh -huh. And my brother was a dog lover, so he had him all the time. Uh -huh, so he's uh -huh. that house in Penwin with the front lawn. Yeah. Well, he was rolling Linky down the hill, <laughs> and over the yeah, <laughs> and Linky loved it. He's running back up. <laughs> he pushed him back down. They, this Bob would never give up, you know. So, some lady in the neighborhood saw this and she oh. thought it was abusive. Oh. Called the SPCA. Oh. <laughs> It was a big uproar about it. My mother said, look, oh. we're giving the dog back the Ding Dong. My grandmother, oh. her name's <laughs> Ding Dong. Okay. So there I am on her front steps on Calder Avenue in oh, Ardmore, yeah. holding, holding Linky yeah. that we had to give back. So at that point, we had oh. no dog and never did till I got back. <laughs> I had to get my own way to get yeah. married. <laughs> so I guess maybe you were seven or eight. I don't know. It's hard to tell in that yeah, picture. I, I'm, yeah. I'm Close to ten there. I okay, think. and this is up I'm on guessing. Coulter Avenue in Ardmore. Yeah, one thirteen front okay. steps. Okay, it's opposite. Uh, those of you watching today, it's opposite from uh, Trader Joe's and in the, the in farmers' market. In those days, it was the Ardmore freight station. Freight station. Big long freight building. Uh, uh, Railway Express. The Railway Express uh, okay. was there. Okay. The whole, the whole works. Yeah. All right, now Ed, we we're well. Your first house, the twin, which yeah. doesn't look like a twin. Yeah, I mean because they, this is the other half. They here. did a good, the architects did a good job of making those look like individual homes. You know why? They put on the first side, they put the front door front, and on the second side, they put it on the side. side. Mm -hmm. Now, on a corner house, that worked out perfect because this is the upper side. Right. That was street front, and this was street You never front. know that was a twin no, house. No. <coughs> no. <coughs> now, how close and was this? Can I to tell you about the people who live next door? Okay. Okay. Their name was Gardner. Our first ones. And Mr. Gardner was the head coach of the Philadelphia Rambler hockey, ice hockey team. Mm. That was the Eastern mm. Hockey League. Mm. That's mm. In those days, you know, that wasn't a big deal. Hockey wasn't well known. Mm. No. But they played down in Philadelphia, West Philadelphia 46 at the arena. Oh, yeah, yeah. But he was the head coach. That was, mm. I don't know if this is his only mm. job, but any job was worthwhile in those days, having a job, you know. Mm. Well, he had two girls. And one girl, uh, their name was Gardner. Pat Gardner was the older daughter, and she was a little bit pretty close to my age, maybe a couple of years older. So roll the clock ahead to 1961. We're talking about the 30s. 1961, <clears throat> I moved into a home in Westchester, West Goshen Township. My backyard neighbor, <laughs> and I didn't realize it because I didn't recognize her name, was Pat Gardner. Her wow. name was Pat wow. Rhodes. So, so she went from being your yeah. twin house to, <laughs> to <laughs> quite a coincidence. <laughs> wow. From, from the 30s to the 60s, uh, yeah. like 30 some years later, yeah. she's my backyard and neighbor. And you didn't plan it we at all. We didn't pick it. No. <laughs> it's a total surprise. Ed, we have to take a break for a few minutes, but uh, we'll be right back. Uh, with more of Living History with Ed Minchel and Penn Wynn.